I'm Alfred Korn, and I'm reading uh, poems of mine. This one is titled Moving, New York, New Haven Line. And it uh, recounts an experience I had many years ago when I was living in New York, but teaching uh, at Yale in New Haven. And I was commuting once a week to my class. And uh, I sort of memorized the itinerary of the train and um, wrote this poem about it. Moving, New York, New Haven line. Taught on the leash, at last I have my way. The train jolts off just for a split second, immobilizing a porter I catch sight of through my window, pushing his cart. The platform's a treadmill or a backward rack, for his feet notwithstanding, he grinds into reverse, left behind in underground darkness. That forward backward prank gets pl cruelly played on every car or truck that races with us along the paralleling highway. Try as they might, our motion slowly breaks them. It sends them backsliding faster and faster behind. A feeling I recall from nightmares, nightmares, and to tell the truth from real life as well. Another stunt of overtaking, like my own sharp about face two months back, is the fateful rotation a car makes. Trunk to grill, we see it, a slow pivotal display practiced in fact on every near item in the window, especially trees, their radially branching form flung into perfect umbrella turns, clockwise because I see them from the train's left side. Indian file, they run and pirouette together, the closest rank so much quicker than others farther out, which fall behind at a desultory pace. This constant shuttle between two points has made at least some aspects of the pattern clearer. Passengers riding backwards though, see things otherwise and must feel guilty about it. When I turn and catch them looking, their eyes drop and they assume a preoccupied air meant to mime some private train of thought. Impatience, funk, a half wish for derailment. They don't have you waiting for them, smiling. Our steady legato impetus is barred at regular intervals by metal poles that fly by in a soon predictable tempo echoed also by the sag and soar of high-strung staff lines hanging down between. I keep looking for groups of eighth-note starlings to give the gallop a tune, but none are there, nor ever even a rest, just a continuing inaudible rush, variably elastic according to our speed, which hums the landscape into a final tableau of motion itself a thing so strangely still at its utmost. The factories, ash heaps, stations, transports caught in a fastness that wants to hold my eyes in thrall and lock me up in sleepless dreams. Your voice is putting accents in the transit, pulling me toward you on a silken line. And dreams that ran on time were vehicles for something else. My mind winks on again. Yes, there's that river we cross here now, the same and always different. A breeze intangible to me suddenly wakes the trees and blows on the gray water, shriveling the surface into a kind of elephant skin. A chevron of migrant geese flies into it, bullseye straight to the heart of 20 concentric spreading circles. Water, birds, trees swerve. How is it possible to be moved in so many ways at once? Our conductor shouts to listen for a station. Though I've kept to one spot, the place has changed. That along with the name, which red letter by reverse red letter rolls toward me. Our shared news, and the rest is neither here nor there, is anywhere we both shelter, still moving 
for deeper welcomes, reunions. This racing panic will stop once it's reminded we are the only place I really want to go.